Um, probably, I'm not a divisional, I mean, uh, officer. I was, you know, I mean, officer commanding a unit. But then I don't remember, honestly speaking, I don't remember receiving an operational, you know, I mean, order. But then it comes to the same. Um, uh, whether I receive an operational order or I receive a verbal, you know, order, as I told you at the initial stage, you know, of this, uh, this session, that I can take both written and, uh, and uh, oral, you know, I mean, orders. I could not definitely remember if so is the case. It could be, but I could not, I could not remember. It's, it's long time ago. We do, in fact, have an operational order that was tendered before mm -hmm. the Commission of Inquiry into the disturbance of April 10 and 11. So we'll go back to that mm -hmm. in the near future. But in the meantime, okay. I just want to mm -hmm. go back to the order you received from Mr. Saul. Yes, That ma particular order you received, you did mm -hmm. mention earlier that it was sufficient for you, right? Yes, ma'am. Let's go back to the list that you provided for us with respect to what an operational order should contain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You did mention that it should contain the nature of the operation, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. This oral order you said was given to mm -hmm. you. Did it mm -hmm. clearly state the nature of the operations that was supposed to take place on the 10th of April 2000? Yes, ma'am. It, it, it entails, it entails, you know, all those, I mean, those things for the operation, you know, I mean, to be, and then, and then moreover, moreover, again, the following day, you know, when he called me back, when he called again for a second time. My apologies for calling, uh, for cutting you here. Okay. I just want to go through okay. the list that you had provided for me earlier. So we'll go step mm -hmm. by step. We'll eventually reach where okay. you want us to go. Okay, ma. <laughs> Secondly, the order you received from Mr. Sao, did it state the number of men you were supposed to take for the operation? uh no he just he just said you know i mean get your standby you know your standby unit ready because um one thing i mean we um i need to clarify uh, um we cannot have a specific number for a particular you know operation because we don't uh, deal with a lot of operations or the duties apart from you know this uh, specific you know operation i have said so you cannot have a specific number. What I used to have is a standby unit, which which is about um, uh, not more than 30. And even that standby unit, sometimes you can have some people who might be absent for for either they, they are sick or they have, you know, emergencies. So you, can, you cannot have a specific number. Yeah. Okay. We'll go through this list and we'll go through the list of the operational order that was tendered before the Commission of Inquiry. Now, going through your own list mm -hmm. that you've given, the order you received from mm -hmm. Mr. Sao, did it state what is expected of you and your men on the 10th of April 2000? Exactly. Exactly, Ma. My expectation was um, uh, to, maintain, to maintain order. Yes. My expectation was to maintain order, and if there is a demonstration that is disturbing the public order, let me make sure that you know. I mean, the order is maintained. That was specifically, am... you know, said to me. My apologies again, uh, but you didn't answer my correction. My co correction was not about your own expectation. Oh, okay. My correction was about the expectations of the order that was transmitted to you, the oral order from Mr. Sao. Did it clearly state what was expected of oh. you and your men on that day? Yes, yes, it was. Uh, that's that's what I'm saying. It was uh, the expectation were to to maintain law and order. To... 
that was the expectation with regards you know, to that demonstration. From what he said, you understood your mission as to maintain law and order, right? Exactly, Ma. Exactly. And did this operational order provide how this is supposed to be achieved? Uh, no, no, Ma. I don't. Uh... I don't have uh, I don't have anything you know I mean to be achieved. But then, however, our achievement was not to allow the the public order to be disturbed. That was that was our aim. That was, that was supposed to be our achievement. There is a difference between what is supposed to be your achievement and what is clearly transmitted to you. Mm -hmm. I'm trying yeah, that was to, that was. I'm trying to gauge your understanding of what is transmitted to you from the operations commander. Mm -hmm. uh, my operations commander uh, uh, told me that there could be a, a demonstration state, you know, by Sudan. Under what? What I am supposed, you know, I mean, to do is to go on the ground and maintain, you know, the law and order, you know, on the ground. So the expectation, you know, from him, from the order who he gave me, is to make sure that law and order is being maintained, that, you know, nothing is disrupting, you know, the... Hello? Nothing is disrupting the normal activities of uh, of other or other people okay hello yes uh, yeah okay. we can yeah. hear you loud and clear even if you're not seeing us okay. we can still proceed okay so yeah mm -hmm. the order you received from mr sao did it state anything mm -hmm. about the use of force no no I was not. Uh, I was not. I was not asked to use force. I was not. Well, is it? Is that not odd on its own? Given that you're not even told how you're supposed to do, or how you're supposed to carry out your operations. Actually, ma, um, um, as 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 officer commanding or as a police officer. If an order is given to you by your superior, um, he cannot go back like if you are at the training school that you should do A, B, C, D, and and so forth. But you however, as the as the has okay. Sorry to cut you again. However, yeah. if mm -hmm. you are not clear as to how to go about that particular order. Aren't you supposed to confirm from your superior how you're supposed to carry out carry out your order? Very correct. Very correct. Very correct. That is that is in the event in the event I have doubt or in the event I don't have you know the manpower or in the I don't probably have you know I mean the the logistics you know supplies the means the equipment that I'm supposed to have to carry out that order. Then I will be I will be in a position. You know, to 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 ask him how am I going to carry out you know this operation? That's very true. In some cases, I I, I did. Going back to security forces in general, even mm -hmm. the slightest thing as whether to use force or not, am I correct to say that mm -hmm. you're supposed to get instructions as to how to go about it from your superior, right? Yes, if you are to use force, you know, you have to get instruction to be told how to go about it. Use force, you know, without any, any instruction, any order. That's very correct. And the amount of force also needs to be defined by your superior, right? Um, it could be defined by my superior, but then I know it also. Because as a trained, you know, I'm an officer, I should know the amount of force that I should use, for instance, to to a child who is coming to me when I feel that you know I'm uh, you know I'm I'm being attacked, or, or to an adult who, for example, come with a stick or a knife 
I should know the amount of force that I should use to defend myself or to defend, you know, the part that is under under my under my security. That that we, as as an officer, you should know that. When it comes to force, is it not the responsibility mm -hmm. of the superior to determine the gravity of force that needs to be used at a particular operation? Yes, the superior has you know the authority to determine the use of force to be used for a particular operation. But if you are on the as you know the commanding officer, you use your initiative because by then your your superior might not be there. He might be in the office or somewhere else. Now it's you as the officer commanding or the one in charge of that operation to use your discretion initiative. To know whether it is you need to use force, you know, because you've been taught what it was. So you're telling us that it is the discretion of the commanding officer to determine the force that is to be used in an operation, regardless of an if, instruction if the or an order received from his superiors. No, no, no. Point of point of correction. Um, uh, you can be given an instruction with regard to the amount of force that you are supposed to use for a particular operation. However, however, if you are on the ground, because situations, you know, deteriorate, situation changes, you know, from one stage, you know, I mean, to another. Whilst you are on the ground, superior is not on the ground. You, you are able to use your initiative to know what level of force that you need to use for this, you know, particular, I mean, event that is exactly in front of you. But that doesn't mean that, that doesn't mean that, you know, you should disregard, you know, I mean, what is, what is given, what is uh, the force that is given to you, because you, that one has to be. Okay. Um, let's say in the case of um, use of a weapon, for example, a gun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you are not authorized by your superior to use a gun, mm -hmm. can you use your discretion to do so? Never. Never. Never, mom. Because the use of force, that, that one is called even deadly force. It's going to be a deadly force. The use of deadly force has to come whatever, you know, I mean, the case, whatever the situation has to come, you know, I mean, to your superior. It should be, you know, an order. If any of, you know, the police officer or security officer use force uh, at his or her discret discretion without, you know, the, his superior or her superior, then that person, you know, I mean, needs, needs to, be, to, to be punished or answered, you know, for, for that question. So it can't, it can happen. It shouldn't happen. Like I told you earlier, an operational order was in fact mm -hmm. issued and it was tendered before mm -hmm. the Commission of mm -hmm. Inquiry into the disturbance of April 10 and 11. So I'm reading right. from mm -hmm. the report itself at page 263 of yes, no. the report of the Commission of Inquiry. And the right. title of the document that is attached to it is the general and ad administrative instructions from for operation student watch commencing friday 7th april 2000. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now on the seventh on uh, the second page of it paragraph b mm -hmm. it provides mm -hmm. that canipin division mm -hmm. Three mm -hmm. platoon of m 20 men, each to be headed by mm -hmm. ASP Momodu Sise and ASP mm -hmm. Modugay. They are to mm -hmm. be based at the PIU headquarters and the divisional headquarters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you aware of this? No. I'm not aware of that. I, I have my platoon that was based in Kanifing, you know, with, with me. But I don't, because what happened is Carnifin Division is a, is an institution, is a unit of its own under half an officer command, which is ASP, Momodukei. I agree with that. 
and the police intervention is another unit of its own which was based in uh, Carnifing as the officer commanding who is myself you know speaking to you so we cannot we cannot have, i mean uh, how do you call it conflict of of command when you have two units commanding you know two units at the same time it, it could be conflict of you know i mean i mean command so help us understand this a little bit you were stationed okay. at the piu no. correct yeah. yes ma'am and uh, that's right asp modigay where was he based he was uh, the kind of thing division um, commander and uh, i think his office was in sarakun normally it should be in Kerala station but i think you know for his case he was in sarakun division but he was not in piu myself i was in piu now with respect to command and how things worked can you please help mm -hmm. us understand who was answerable to who um, in respects of command, the police intervention unit is directly answerable to me. There is no other officer commanding who can come and command my unit without my knowledge. Likewise, you know, his unit, while he was the officer commanding anything, I can't go and then command, you know, I mean, his unit, you know, without his knowledge, especially, particularly in this particular day when you have, you know, I mean, the this right of the students. Were you answerable to him? No, no, no. I was not answerable to him. We are both we are both answerable to the commissioner of police who was public. So I was not answerable to him. So based on what I've read so far, let me read it again so that you will get All it. Right. it. Said three platoons mm -hmm. of twenty men, each to be headed by ASP Momodusise and ASP Modugay. Mm -hmm. They are to be based mm -hmm. at the PIU headquarters and the divisional headquarters. Mm -hmm. Are you suggesting mm -hmm. that this is defective? Yeah, um, uh, you have mentioned, if I understand, on that operational order, two, a platoon of 20 men to be based in uh, PIU headquarters and the divisional headquarters. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Their platoon will stay at the divisional headquarters, which is kind of thing, and uh, my platoon will stay at my headquarters which is which is uh, which is police intervention unit that's that is correct to to bring that point of correction so are you suggesting but then that it would... my apologies okay are you yeah. suggesting yeah. that you have never seen this other prior to the incident of april 10 or you've never seen it at all uh, ma, uh, honestly speaking i can't I can't remember. I can't remember. It could be. It could be. Honestly speaking, it's, it's a long time. But I can't remember. I mean, seeing you know that operational order. However, I I received verbal order you know from him. I can't remember receiving that order because all the operational order that I received, I filed them. I'm always filing them. We have, like the number of men on this operational order, we have three platoons of twenty men. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you said you had only 30 men under you, which is which? No, no, no. No, no, no. I don't have 30 men under me. Um, uh, 30 men under me. Sorry, I said you mentioned the that you had a standby of 30 men. Uh, exactly. I have them to you now. Let me bring that point of correction. I have three platoons, which is not more than, you know, I mean, 30. One platoon, one platoon is responsible you know for for the duties that i have said to you now at the american embassy british embassy igp residence minister of interior and so forth i'm responsible for that and uh, a second platoon is a standby you know platoon and the third platoon now is the platoon that is off duties like for instance the platoon, like if platoon one is on duty at these places I have mentioned to you, then the following day, whilst I'm having two platoons at the at the camp, the following day they will go off duties and then the standby platoon that was there will take over, you know, from them. So you will see at a time, at a particular time, I'll have one platoon 
in the compound at the PIU, one platoon that is off duties and another platoon, you know, that is on duty. However, however, if in the case of, you know, I have emergency and I'm told, you know, to bring enough, you know, men on the ground, which I did, then I will call on those who are off duties, you know, to come over and reinforce, you know, the standby platoon that was there. So Thank subsequently, you. you will have basically two platoons. Thank you. Based on this operational order, it sort of like required you to use all the men under your control, including the ones that were on duties. Am I correct? Yeah, right, right. The, in, in this one, yes. Because, I mean, uh, I, I, was, I, was, uh, I was bound to use even those men, you know, who were off duties. And uh, I, I called them, you know, I mean, to come over. That's right. Did you, in fact, use all the men that were on, under your control on that particular day? No, I could, I could not use all of them. As, as I said to you earlier on, some men, you know, could be sick. Others could have emergencies. Others could have, uh, it depends on private things that, you know, they were doing at that particular time. So what happened is I will, I will get as much as those who were on off, you know, to reinforce, you know, the one that are on standby. So not all of them were used. So how many men did you actually use for the operations of April 10? Uh, yeah, that, that, uh, let me see. Um, not more than 50, huh? not more than 50 more, because if I have the platoon that, that is on standby 30 and probably uh, another 10, 15 from the others, you know, at least, at least I can, I could have, you know, another, another 15 or 20 from there. So it's not more than 50 that I have for that very day. And whilst where... the other platoon is already, you know, this area. My apologies again. And where... Mm -hmm. Do the others normally yeah. emanate from? Where do they actually come from? Who o writes the order and distributes them? The order for With you to... With regards to what? For, for my men to come on duty? Or... No, the orders I'm talking about, the operational orders, where do they emanate from normally? No. No, a personal orders normally comes from the police headquarters. Normally comes from the police headquarters because that's where it should come from the commission of cooperation. However, sometimes I may ask, I may ask to write an operational order, depending on the operation, and then I will take that operational order and then send it, you know, to the police headquarters for the commissioner's review to check it whether it's okay, and then it will be endorsed. Effectively, there is a disconnect with respect to the order given from the operational order and what you had in reality, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You had about Hello? 30 men on standby as, as you had indicated to us, correct? Yeah, about, yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that is every day. That is every day I have, you know, at, at least uh, I have about 30 men on standby. And this operational order we have here required you to use at least 60 men. Mm -hmm. Correct? Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So where would the 20 men have come from? Um, this is what I have explained to you, Ma. Let me go back again to, to what is uh, what I have said. Uh, hello, are you with me? Yes, I am, actually. Hello, are you with me? <laughs> yes, my apologies. Uh, I zoomed uh, out a okay, bit. Okay, yeah, okay. Let me, let, let me, yeah, exactly, because I saw the image was, you know, freeze. I will go back to what I have said again. I have three platoons, three. And the one platoon is for um, uh, these duties I have told you, American Embassy, IG's residence, and all the places. That, those, those, that platoon is for that. I will be left, you know, with two platoons. 
out of the tunes, I have one that is off duty, and then one which is active duties, which is you know in the in the camp. And these three platoons, that's how they rotate. Whilst one is on, another one is you know doing other duties, another one is off duties. So the very day of this, you know, April 10, I was having one platoon in the camp, which was already there. The two other platoons, one was of duties and the, another one was at the at various you know duties I have mentioned earlier. So to substitute, you know, the number of you know men that that is requested as for the operational order, you know, you are reading now in front of you, I have to call the ones that were on off duties. That is that is our standards. If 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 you are off duties and then we need you know to come for one reason or the other, you will. So that's when you know I call those people, and as I stated, I could not have the whole number of you know people that I wanted for one reason or the other. They might be sick, they might have emergencies, they might have uh, private issues to do. But then what I have is around fifty, not not more than that. Did you at from any the point off duties and the one who were on standby? Did you at any point recall any of your men to join you? Yeah, the one I recall were, were those on, on off duties. Those are the only one I call. The one who were on guard, on respective, you know, statics guard, I don't touch them because those were sensitive areas. You cannot call those people in any circumstances. You should not call them. So I did not. I only call those who were off duties. You've told us that you were called at night on the 9th of April 2000, correct? Yes, ma'am. So can you please help us understand how you had enough time to call your men to actually join you? Right, right, ma'am. Um, uh, you know, my men are regrouped, you know, in the camp. And all of them, all of them, you know, you know in that camp, it can be in TIU. And then the rest of the men who were not being able, you know, to be residents, you know, in TIU, stayed in uh, Babun Fati, Yoshuan. That's where they are given residence. So whenever, you know, these emergencies, you know, I mean, occur or happen, easily, you know, you can get all of them, you know, to come over. The one on staff are there because they know that they are on duty. Now, the one on off duty, these are the ones that now you, you will go, you know, to the residence where, we, where they stay and the way we work, and then you go to Babun Fati and the call, you know, those people to, to come over. So that's what's, you know, helped me, I mean, to get all those people, you know, to come and, uh, and uh, help, you know, in this operation. That's how I gathered them. At what stage did you make the call? Immediately, I received the call from the operational officer, the commission of operation. Immediately, I received the call. Immediately, you know, I call, you know, my point of contact, you know, my RSM and uh, my my uh, my clerk to make sure that let them inform all, you know, the standby, you know, I mean, to stay fast, to be at the camp. And that the rest of the people, you know, who were off duties, some of them, they were staying, you know, in Carnity because we all stay together. Others were staying in Babun Fati, and I sent, you know, my RSM to go and uh, inform them of what is next is going to happen. So the same evening, I, I, I did so. Well, do you realize that um, the statement you provided us, which you did not indicate that you actually called some of your men that were not on duty to join you? Yeah, I did not. I did not state it there. Actually, um, if I want to state ev everything, every single thing, then then I can do it. But then this is how I I call. You know, I mean my men, because I mean a PIU. They, I mean, is a is an intervention unit, and what they are told is that any time, any given moment of the day, of the night, you know, you would you should you could be called. You know, for for duties for an emergency. So that one we have it. And either it has been happening since you know the police intervention was created. Not even this one, but even in emergency, you can get all your I mean unit, you know, within 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 hours. And you also realize that this is an important element in determining the number of men that you are gathered that particular day mm -hmm. with respect to your evidence. Yeah, it could be. It, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's important. It's important to know the number of men 
that that way I gathered, you know, for that very day. I agree, you know, I'm with you. So this is why I'm testifying and I'm giving you the number of men that I had and how I got them, you know, for this operation. That's very right. And also stated in your statement that you said mm -hmm. I had, I asked Corporal Corps to ascertain and unveil mm -hmm. the list of personnel on duty and those on standby to the RSM who in turn inform them, that is the personnel, of the possible mission on the following day, mm -hmm. April 10th. So those who right. were off duty were not even mentioned, correct? Of course, Ma. Of course, what I what I have said, you know, I say that you know, I mean, let him make uh, let him make you know the list of you know people available who were who were on standby, and uh, and I get you know, I mean, other people to you know who were on standby, you know, I mean, to come over. That's very correct. In fact, even when you started your evidence with respect to how you guarded your men, you did not even mention the fact that you had recalled those people that were off duty. And in your statement as well, it's the same thing. So it's like this is an addition into your evidence, correct? Uh, no, not an addition to my evidence, Ma. Um, um, uh, um, I think I have even spoken few things that I have not put you know, in my evidence. I, I think so, since we started, you know, I mean, discussing. So, I mean, uh, what I'm telling you now is the, is a supplement of, you know, what is, you know, in my statement. Okay, so, um, had it been that I knew that I was supposed to give the exact number, how I got my name, I, I will do so. I'll I will do so, but then I on. think, you know, this interview is for me to supplement what I have said. Yeah. I'll, I'll leave this point and move on and yeah. leave the commissioners to actually deduce from your evidence. Now, going back to the operational order that we have that was right. submitted before right, the commission, I have on point seven, which mm -hmm. provides the discretions and the initiatives. Can you tell us what the discretions mm -hmm. were with respect to this particular operation you were supposed to embark on? You mean my discretion under my own initiative? With regards to this uh, operation, what discretions were you told to exercise with respect to the operation? Um, I I I, I said it again, uh, which I'm I'm going to elaborate again. I said, I mean, uh, what um, our discretion was to 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 maintain to maintain public order in general. And in maintaining, you know, I mean, public order as a police officer at this school, you were taught, you know, so many things, you know, that you should do. And the one, as I said, you know, to protect life and property. Two, to arrest and detain, you know, I mean, suspect. Three, you know, I mean, to, to prepare case file and the submitted case file, you know, I mean, to the prosecution office, you know, I mean, for before, before, a, before a magistrate, after their review. And that is how, you know, it goes. Um, sorry, Mr. Njai, so you, you, um, my you apologies have, you for have taking been, you. I mean, a list. I apologize for taking you back. You're speaking really fast, so it's very difficult for me to catch up. If you can take it a bit slowly and oh. state your point. Um, <laughs> okay. I stopped at um, arrest and okay. detention. Okay. Then proceed with the rest, please. Yeah, yeah, I said, um, yeah, I said, uh, but, I mean, in maintaining order, I mean, uh, you were taught so many things, you know, at the police, you know, training school, which are the basic things that you are supposed to, to learn. That is arrest, arrest and arrest and detain. Uh, Mr. Nyai, uh, my apologies. My question was, what were uh -huh. the discretions mm -hmm. that you were told to exercise for that particular operation, not what you were taught in... Uh, school training school yeah this, this is what i'm saying yeah, this is what i'm saying what i was um in fact I'm, i have given you that is to maintain public order 
to maintain law and order. In maintaining that law and order, I mean, you have to go through all these things as, you know, you are witnessing, you know, I mean, scenes or crime, you know, on during the operations. So under during that time, you can, you, your first, your first thing to do is to protect life and property. And okay. if you see suspects, you arrest them and detain them. And they take them, you know, I mean, to... My apologies again. Um, just to go by what you're saying, are you suggesting that you implied mm -hmm. that you should exercise these discretions and you were not actually told what discretions to exercise? But impliedly, from your training, you believe that your discretion was to maintain law and order and to effect arrest when necessary. Am I cor correct in saying all this? No, my, my point, of, point, of, point of correction, ma, point of correction on, on that. I'm giving an order that like, for instance, go and arrest this person. I need you to arrest the person. Let's say this, the, this is the instruction. It's given to me, but the person, my superior who has given me, you know, that order is not there. But if I go on the ground to arrest that person, sometimes situation, you know, may change. Probably the person may be cooperate, I mean, may cooperate with me. And then I'll arrest the person and, uh, and, uh, and bring him or her. But then if the person doesn't cooperate, then I will use certain, probably certain uh, physical contact to get, to get the person. Now, in this case, what the operational officer or uh, the operational order said, go under maintain order at GTTI. Okay, I'm trying to understand you yeah. here because you're not actually answering my question. My question is, mm -hmm. what discretions mm -hmm. were you told to exercise? It's for you to say whether you were told to exercise any discretions or not. I am not asking if you... Okay. Like, okay, I was with not, respect to your training and not, background, was, right, I'm asking right. I was with not, respect I, to the order you're now given. I got the question. Now I got the question. I was not asked you not know, to use force. I was not asked at any time to use force. Repeat that, please. I said I was not asked any time, you know, to use force or a deadly force. I was okay. not. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I did tell you about the operational order we have in front of us from the Commission of Inquiry into the disturbance of April 10 and 11. So I'll read from the mm -hmm. discretion mm -hmm. written mm -hmm. on the order. During right, the ma. execution of our lawful duties, commanders are required to be as discreet as possible and use only that necessary force required for handling any situation. All members of the force are reminded that they should be courteous, open, neutral, tact, and approachable. Duties are to be carried out in accordance with the law and stand to protect life and property in the best possible and discreet manner. Correct. So from this, I totally agree with that. Yes, from this um, mm -hmm. operational order I'm reading, force mm -hmm. was actually allowed, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So from the operational mm -hmm. order, you were indeed mm -hmm. authorized to use force? Yes, force could be, but what kind of force? Is it physical force or deadly force? Well, if it's you say not force for me was allowed, to answer, yes. Sorry, it's not for me to ah, answer okay. that question. Okay, yeah, yeah, force. Okay, okay, force was allowed, yeah. You're yeah. the one giving your evi mm -hmm. evidence. I'm merely guiding you. Okay, so okay. You... No, I thought I was trying to, um, how would I say, to clarify, you know, the issue. Yeah, force was allowed to use. But you Required just told us that you're not allowed to use force. Yeah, but, Ma, when I said force is not allowed to be used is because you have level of forces that you can use and i give you, you know, an example if you go just to arrest you know somebody and the calm, somebody who's who's cooperating with you you will arrest the person there is no physical force 
But if the person resists, obviously there will be a contact. You will use a force, you know, to arrest another person and bring him you know, to the person where he is supposed to be. So force is always used, you know, in the execution of our duties. Thank you for that. We were. I was actually leading towards a practical situation, not actually what is exactly. stated in a, in, a, in a book, a hypothetical situation. Okay. So we'll move on to that. So it, yeah. the operational order, as we see, provided that force is actually allowed. Yes, force is allowed. It's required but depending on the... You mentioned to us just a minute ago that you mm -hmm. were not actually allowed to use force. No, ma. When you ask me, when you ask me, under this example I just give you, I mean, minutes ago, that's the same thing, you know, I told you, that, you know, if you go on the ground, even if you are allowed to use force, okay, let me say, yes, I was not allowed to use force. But if I go on the ground and I, I encounter resistance, so obviously force is going to be used there. If I said I don't use force, I may be lying. So which force is it now? Is it physical? Is it deadly? Or is it something else? You have to. Force okay. has to be used. Okay, Even if Mr. you are not too at the, in the operational order. Um, yeah. Mr. Njai, I'm just trying to as I'm mm -hmm. just trying to verify whether there was a disconnect mm -hmm. between the operational order mm -hmm. and what you were okay. actually asked to do. Okay. And what you told us right now. Yeah, that's what I told you right now. Because an you just, order can, yes, you have just told us right now. Please just listen to the question. Don't be in a hurry. <laughs> we have a long way to go okay. as it is. Yeah. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. You have just told us that you were not allowed to use force. Not so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You did told us that you are not allowed to use force, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the operational order that I've just read to you right now, the one that was submitted before the commission, mm -hmm. and the one mm -hmm. that has the signature mm -hmm. of the commissioner of operations, that is Mr. Saul, mm -hmm. clearly mm -hmm. indicates that you mm -hmm. are allowed to use the necessary force required, speaking directly Mm -hmm. Speaking directly from the language of the text, you are required mm -hmm. to use the necessary force. So mm -hmm. clearly, force was permitted as mm -hmm. per this operational order. Mm -hmm. So I just need to know, what was your understanding mm -hmm. of the discretion you were allowed to carry out on that particular day? Um. Ma, I told you at the first place that, you know, I don't receive, you know, a detailed operational order that you are reading to me now, before me, which you have before, on, uh, in, on your table. I was having that operational order. I could not remember having it. Let me use that word. But what I could remember is that I was told, you know, to go and uh, disperse, you know, some students by maintaining um, uh, uh, law and order. Now, um, if now I'm, I'm informed, I'm being informed that I can use necessary force that is required, you know, to, to do my operational duties, then I will take it as that. But then I don't receive any, any operational order. I could not remember receiving detailed operational order, you know, like that. I could not. So basically you're telling us that you're hearing this for the first time. No, 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 this is not for the first time I'm hearing these things. I, I hear these things many times, you know, when I'm, I'm, I'm carrying out operations. I'm talking about this particular operational times. order, Mr. Guy. Using your necessary force. Yes, I'm talking about the operational order yes, that was in, supposed to guide your operations. Mm -hmm. And what I've read to you so far, mm -hmm. was this the first time that you've heard of it? Mm -hmm. Um, you can say, yeah, this, this but could the be, yeah, this is my first time because, as I said, I don't. This is my first time. Oh, yeah, I said, this is my first time 
you know, to hear that what you are reading, you know, to me, because I don't remember having a physical document of such detailing what and what you know I'm supposed you know I mean to do. Um, this is what I have said. Mr. Yai, this was a major yes, operations that you were supposed to embark on. Was it not a fundamental right, error for you to embark on such operations without receiving any mm -hmm. written order that clearly provides mm -hmm. a guideline mm -hmm. as to how you should go about that particular operation? I agree with that. I agree with that. I totally agree with you. Okay. I then. totally agree with you. Mm -hmm. So you agree with me that it was a fundamental failure on your part not to I, inquire more about what you were supposed to do on that particular day? I agree with you. Exactly, I agree with you. I will not dispute on that. And you will also agree that it is also a failure on the part of the police administration for failing to deliver an operational order that will guide your operations on that particular day. I agree with that, Ma. I agree with that. Fair enough. So this tells us that from the beginning of that particular operation, there was a clear disconnect from your unit and the orders you received from the top, correct? Um, it, yes, yeah, there could be a, a connection as, as per the operational orders you are reading, which is detailing specifically, you know, what you are required, you know, I mean, to do. I would say, yes, there could be some instance of disconnection. I agree. Um, it's either there was or there was not, not a could be. So there was a disconnect between what you understood and what was being transmitted to you, correct? Yeah, I will not, no, no, my point of, I would not say um, uh, it was, there was a disconnection because I, I received a call, a, a verbal you know, instruction stating me what I'm supposed to do and the nature of the operation that I'm supposed to do as well. So if I say totally it's disconnection, then uh, I may not tell the truth. But then I again, the you did not actually even know the content of this operational order. You're even surprised by the necessary use of force that I just told you. Yeah, I don't know the content of the operational order. I'm just referring to the, I mean, verbal instruction, verbal message, telephone calls I received, you know, from the operational, I mean, officer, I mean, commissioner. Not what is what is written, what, what you are having now presently on your table. I'm not talking about that. So clearly there w you were misinformed. There was a disconnect between you and operations, right? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Operational order also did not provide for arrest and detention. And clearly there were several arrests and detention on the tent of April 2000, correct? I totally agree with you. That an okay. operational order is, is not detailing all what you are supposed to do on the ground, Ma. And I have, give, I have given you examples. Okay. Um, uh, you um, can go on the ground just to disperse, but then... My apologies, let's okay. just move on okay. from there. Because okay. we are dwelling okay. on this issue too much. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I believe uh, we've exhausted the time allocated for a session. So this will be a convenient time to go on a break and come back. Um, Mark, can I, I come in? Some, uh, Hello? All right with me. My apologies. We have already exhausted the time allocated to us. You can keep that point, but then again, go on with your point. Yeah. Um, uh, because of my professional engagement, uh, if I am, you know, to go and come back again, you know, I may have, you know, some some other things, you know, that I'm doing. 
So I'm appealing with the members of the commission if we can carry out and finish it once and for all. Because I mean, to be frank with you, I'm, I'm, I'm given an allocated time. And uh, if yes, I will go under combat. And uh, now we are three hours ahead of the Gambia. I, I may not, maybe, I probably may not be able, you know, I mean, to continue. So I'm appealing if it is possible, if they can bear you with me, please, we can continue. If they can bear you with me. That's what I'm appealing. Okay, then allow me to um, seek the consent of the chairman yeah. for us to proceed. Yeah, please. Please, yeah. Chairman. Council, actually, we were in your hands. Um, uh, so whatever logistics you worked out with them, we are in your hands. But I'm ready to go until 5 o'clock in the evening. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. We'll proceed uh, so that also we can hear another witness later in the day. So we proceed with it. Thank you. Fine. That's all right with me. Thank you, Mr. But uh, if we have, uh, uh, since I have the floor now, if you can make... Just want to uh, council to be uh, aware of what I'm trying to say. If we uh, continue, I believe the witness is Mr. Momodu Sise. Yes. Council has been saying, uh, Mr. Njai, Mr. Njai, I want to be sure that uh, the record is correct, that uh, for this morning session, yes. your references to Mr. Njai. He's called Sise Njai. <laughs> He's called Sisenjai, so. Oh, oh, yeah, I have so many names here in Gambia. Those ones with okay. the two last names. Sisenjai, sorry. My apologies then. Thank you. You may proceed. Very Thank well, you. very well, very well. No, no, I mean, Mr. Go on. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, you you are correct. You are right. He sees me all the time saying Mr. Sisenjai, Mr. Sisenjai. And I would rather prefer you know, the Mr. Sise, because uh, I I have signed a document which I put, you know, Momodu Sise. I totally agree with you. My, I'm commonly called Sise, yeah, but let's call, let's, let, let's have call me Mr. Sise, if possible. Oh. <laughs> my apologies, but you can understand my confusion when I see Sise Njai. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll try from now on to call you Mr. Sise, but if I go astray, just help me out here, because no, I'm already used to this no guy. Problem. <laughs> no problem. Okay, so we have agreed that there was a disconnect in communication between your unit and that of operations, right? Right, right, ma. So, in effect, you were operating under orders that were not even clear, correct? Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, ma. I, 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 I agree with you. So, since I don't have an operational order with me detailing what I'm so glad. Mm -hmm. When you received um, this information from Mr. Sao. What did you do? Right. Um, when I received this information, you know, from Mr. So, knowing the uh, the nature of uh, the uh, the disturbance uh, and the way it's going to be, where it's going to take place, and what he has uh, informed me, I I started mobilizing. You know, I mean, the units. I started mobilizing the unit, and uh, I said earlier on that uh, I have a standby unit that is uh, that is on the ground, and then those who are off duties, you know, also we we call them to come and reinforce the standby units. That's what I did, and wait, you know, for the next you know, instructions. Okay, you've told us that you received um, this mm -hmm. instruction from Mr. So on the ninth. When did you start mobilizing your right. unit? Right. That, that, I said it immediately after that. I've called, you know, the unit RSM and then the clerk. And uh, I told him, please uh, make sure you inform the standby unit to be prepared. You know, we have an operation. Meanwhile, 
you can also check you know the list of those who are of duties you know to reinforce you know the standby unit that's what i did the same the same night the same evening i did so can you please take us through what you did in preparation of the others that you were supposed to carry out just give us a narrative from that night to the morning of right. the tent right um uh, that that evening i i am not staying in the camp you know i stay outside the camp and uh, when i received you know the information i i made an i made a call before going to the camp for the rsm to to make sure that they make the list ready and they get you know i mean all those who were on standby you know to those who were of duties also to be to be ready so i came to the camp that evening and then uh, start asking my RSM and my clerk whether all the men have been informed. And the answer was yes. The separate platoon was already there and some of the of duties have been informed. And the tomorrow morning, as early as 6 or 6.30, you know, everybody you know, will be on the ground. That was my problem. Then the following day, hello? Go on. Are you me? Hello? Okay. Then the following day, which is uh, which is April April 10th, already around around 6 30, I was already in the camp. And upon my arrival, uh, all the men were assembled, were gathered with their equipment. And those equipments, as I mentioned earlier on, they have you know, their helmets, they have their seals, they have their buttons, they have, you know, I mean, the, um, uh, um, how to call it, the mask, the gas mask, you know, and they have also their tear gases and then a PA system. So this is what they were having. Upon my arrival, I start. I started having briefing with them because obviously, uh, before you take your men under your command to a particular operation, you need to you need to brief them. You need to tell them what is what they are supposed to do. You need to tell them where the operation is going to take place. You need to also check in turn whether they have any question or any doubt that may ask you know, that they may ask you. And at the same time, you also ask the officer commander or the, the commander of the unit to check each and every equipment, whether it's ready, whether they are intact, and so forth. So all these things, I did it you know, in, that, in that morning when I arrived. So now, what essentially did you tell the men when you arrived during the briefing? What exactly did you tell right. them? Right. Right. Um, I told them that uh, we we have an a, a mission, an operation, you know, to carry out, and that this is what I have received, you know, from from Syria, That we have some students who are going to stage, you know, a demonstration, a probable demonstration, because it was not, you know, sure whether they will do it or not. And then our duties when we arrive on the ground. Is going to be to maintain law and order, and all those command has to come. You know, I mean, from me. All your movements, all what you are supposed to do, has to come. You know, from me with the assistance of my RSM, and I get all your equipments ranging from what I have told you now. This right, yes, you know, equipment ready, and then you wait for the next, you know, instructor. Whilst I was, I mean, whilst I was giving them this briefing, then I received a call from the commissioner of operation that yes, I can deploy, you know, my men. He asked me first, do you have your standby? Are they intact? Because he should do that too. Are they okay? Everything is okay. I say yes. All of them are here with their equipment, and they are all okay. Then he asked me to deploy now, you know, to GTTI. 
I just want to seek a few clarification for what you, from what you've told us already. At what mm -hmm. time of the day did you arrive at the office? Around 6.30, I was already in the office. So by the time I took, you know, that briefing of 10 minutes. Sorry, you know, can you repeat minutes, the time? I, I said around, around 6.30, 0630 hours. You've told us that if, even before your arrival, your men had already taken up all their equipment, correct? Yes, that's correct. That's what we normally do. I mean, uh, before my arrival for any operation, they are prepared. They are ready and they are on the ground and they wait for the next instruction. I found them they were already, they already assembled. Can you please tell us what equipment your men were carrying when you arrived? Okay, I will repeat it again, Ma. I told you they carried, you know, I mean, uh, individual seals, helmet, button, uh, um, uh, smoke mask, tear gases, and then a PAC that was supposed, you know, to be, you know, for me. That was supposed to be handed over to me, a, a personal a public address system. You did not mention the use of any gun. Did no, you? no, I did not. Uh, I did not. Uh, oh, sorry. We have also um, a, a tear gas gun. Tear gas gun. Yeah. Tear gas gun. Yeah. Were there any other weapons apart from the ones you've listed that your men had in their possession? No, there were there were there was no no other gun apart from this one. I have missed steps. My apologies for that. I'm just hearing myself speak <laughs> over again. Oh, okay. yeah. You can go ahead and answer the question. Yeah, I said apart from the equipment that i have listed now there was no other you know specific or particular gun you know with, with the units so as far as you can recall you're telling us that the piu had no guns in their position that morning no no gun in their position in at, at that morning however however we need to we need to clarify this point um, I have all the PIU personnel in all the respective duty, I mean, areas who are armed. And can you tell us the... Before we proceed, I want to, I want to make it clear. Um, let's just get this clear a little bit, please. Because you've told us that even before your arrival, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the men were already gathered waiting for you, mm -hmm. correct? Yes, ma'am. That's correct. That's very correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, and this comprised of those who were on That's standby and those who were off duty, correct? Mm -hmm. So who were those correct, that... Correct, ma'am. That's correct. So who were those that um, had guns in their position? Those are the ones who are not in the camp, are the ones that we have posted at the American Embassy, British Embassy, Minister of Interior, the IGP, Supreme Court, and so forth. But in the unit that was supposed, you know, to go for this particular, you know, operation at GTTI, the, what I have listed, what I have told you now, this is what, you know, they, they all have. As far as you can recall, you did not send out word to recall those people that were on duty in their respective post, correct? No, no, never. They so should not. And if anybody, you know, do so, you are to be you you are you are to be answered for it. No, there was so no other were them, not, you know, to leave. Those people were not aware of what was going on at the PIU headquarters, correct? 
um they might know they might know through their through through colleagues through mates you know because if you know we are all it's the same units and uh, and uh, as a unit when there is an information you need to you need for all your all the, all your men to know about it that is that is that is a habit you need them to know what is what is happening because they are security officers they might know what was going to happen probably you've just told us that you only inform yeah. you only ask that the people on standby be informed and the ones that were off duty as well those are the only two categories yeah. that you told us that were gathered on that particular day in the morning correct that, that's right that's very correct those are the ones who are going to be assigned for this particular duties not any other person that's right and that was about 50 men correct yeah about 50 yeah and those that were in their various position mining the various embassies and offices were not included in the 50 you just told us right no they were not they were not included i just want to mention i mentioned it just to let you know that i also have another set who are armed because i want to bring all you know all the lights i want to see you no know, i mean all the lights you know, on what i'm telling you now but then again they were on duty and yeah, they, were they on had duty. work to do and as right. far as um security is concerned they were not supposed to leave their duty post and do some other thing that you did not instruct them to do correct very very correct ma very very correct yep so we'll limit it to the number of people you actually called for this particular operation okay that's very correct ma. very correct yeah we limit it to that yeah so on that particular day you had 50 men gathered correct yes ma about 50 men gathered yes ma correct and all those 50 men mm -hmm. you are telling us right now that none of them carried a gun none of them you know carried a gun because at that point as i said at the beginning anybody who is going to be given a gun is with my knowledge and the person you know has to sign in you know a register if you point that this i mean serial number have there the number of ammunition has to be there under what type of duty you know he's going to he's going to carry out also you know all has to be mentioned so consequently subsequently there was nobody nobody who was carrying weapon within that 50 men i told you who were supposed not to come with me none of them otherwise i would have seen it under the weapon we are supposed to be from my from my own instructions so effectively you as the officer in command knew very well what type of weapons that your men were carrying that day that's what you're telling us right and you're exactly, telling us that exactly, they did not carry any guns right exactly, exactly ma that's my responsibility that's my sole responsibility to know what type of weapon they carry and not what type of was carrying weapon and you've told us that when you arrived the men were already gathered correct that's right that's right ma did you inspect all of them that's that's very correct you know you cannot go on duties during the briefing when you when you brief as i said that 15 minutes briefing i have um the briefing entails inspecting and checking them whether they have all the necessary equipment that they are supposed to do for a particular you know duties and that you even ask them whether they are fit as well whether they are fit to do to, to carry out the duties so i have inspected them and ascertained that everything is okay physically i mean uh, logistic wise um, equipment wise i have done all that okay for how long did yeah. you actually make sure that all of these things are in place remember you've told us that you arrived at the office at 6 30 
Now, how long did it yeah, take you to address the men and inspect all their weapons? The, ab about 15 minutes, because I remember when I arrived in 6.30, as I told you, they were already on the ground. And, uh, and uh, within, within uh, 15, 20 minutes, I, I, I briefed them. And then that's the time I received you know, a call from the operation commander. How about you? Did you carry any weapons? No, myself, I did not. I was not having a weapon. As the officer in command, did you, mm -hmm. let me repeat the question again, did you carry mm -hmm. any weapon with you? As an officer, comma, officer commanding, I don't carry any weapon you know, with me. However, however, um, I could carry a weapon, I could carry a weapon if I'm going for a particular, you know, I mean, duties and I'm authorized not to carry a weapon. Um, um, my apologies again, uh, Mr. Cisse, you're not answering my question. Mm -hmm. My question is not if you mm -hmm. could have carried a weapon. My question is, did you in fact mm -hmm. carry a weapon on mm -hmm. that particular day? No, no, I did not carry a weapon on that particular day. I did not say it. Okay, we'll come to that issue again. Um, you said immediately after you mm -hmm. addressed the men on the operations, you received a call from mm -hmm. the director of operations, Mr. So, and well, he asked you to deploy your men. Yeah. Where did he ask you to deploy your men? Okay. Um, the Commission of Operation, the Commission of Operation Babu Kapsau asked me um, to deploy my men at the eye. That's where, you know, we went. Sorry, I didn't get that. At where? At GTTI, GTTI, Technical Training Institute, Gulf, Tango, Tango, India. Well, thank you very much for that. Um, from GTT, from your headquarters at the PIU to GTTI, how many minutes is that? Um, it's roughly depending on on the traffic. You know, you know, GTTI and the police intervention is just. You can even stand and uh, see GTTI over there. It's uh, not more than five minutes. Not more than five minutes. So how did you converge? Depending on the traffic, because it was a rush hour. How did you converge at GTTI? I went, you know, by, by vehicle. We were having, you know, a, a vehicle, official vehicle, you know, under us. And uh, that's what I I used, you know, to convert, you know, my my men, you know, to GTTI. How about, personal to GTTI. My apologies. How about your men? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We had a vehicle at the police intervention unit. That's what I used, you know, to transport, to convey, you know, the unit GTTI. We went by 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 vehicle. Okay, can you please take us through what happened when you arrived at GTTI? Okay, um, on my arrival at GTTI, um, of course, yes, I arrived. All the men, you know, I mean, this back, you know, from uh, from the vehicle, and then they assemble on the other side of the road. That is the opposite side where you know the crowd is uh, is standing, where you can see the crowd. I was on the side of the road going towards Banjul, and they were on the other side of the road going towards, you know, Jimpex. So when I came, I, the men, I brought them down, you know, assembled them, and then I had discretion, my own discretion to go, because when I arrived, I saw the crowd there at GTTI. I, I could see actually um, uh, not only one, but then you could see one around the main road another one on the left hand side and the one inside you know gtti and at the same time at that point in time i i i, I noticed you know soldiers armed soldiers who came 
from Fajara Barracks, and those are the Gambia National Guard, you know, soldiers. I could not see, notice them within the vicinity. So I went and approached um, uh, the, um, whether they were, t I mean, student leaders, but then I know that I approached, you know, some of them. I, I could not identify who was the leader or not, and uh, try to dissolve, you know, the situation to bring it down. So I went approach them and I started talking to them. Um, uh, what is the use of this demonstration that you want to stay? It is better you leave, you know, this place peacefully, go to your respective business, either to school or you go back home. So, so uh, in the group, I could... Uh, I could have some some murmuring, some answers. Like some of them were saying, no, we won't go. Some of them are saying, no, 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 a sort of. But yet still, I I, I continue pleading them that you know this, you know, they have to they have to leave. They have to leave, you know, I mean this place and go home to disturb, you know, the public order. That was the second time I told them that, but still. They refuse, and apparently they are getting more agitated. So I say, okay, that's fine. So as I was going back to where the unit was standing, the, I mean the the police intervention on the other side of the road, the opposite side of the road. Then you can see how they were getting more and more agitated. Hello. Are you, okay. Yeah. So you, you can see how they were getting more and more agitated. And uh, I could also notice, observe that they were even like uh, coming more now on the highway and that it was uh, eventually the highway was, uh, was like, you know, blocked. So no vehicle was, could go. The one coming from Banjul, you know, towards the Rekula. You can see that the, the traffic was completely blocked. So at that stage, with their agitation, I said, okay, what should I do? Then I took, you know, my PA system, the personal address system. Then I talked to them, asking them to leave this place, this fast, you know, this place, and to go home, you know, peacefully. Otherwise, you know, the intervention, the PIU will disperse you. This is what I told them four times, almost four times with interval of five minutes. But it seems any time I say so, they get more agitated and they more come, you know, on the on the highway. So the fourth time when I said so, then I turned, you know, to my unit, to the unit PIU, and then give them a second briefing reminder that this is the situation now we are facing um, uh, the crowd is agitated and uh, they are getting more and more on the highway and uh, now we have to disperse them that was the time i i told them you know to charge and uh, disperse make sure that you know the road is completely clear Thank you very much. Um, I would just like to ask a few questions to clarify some of the right. issues that you've just stated. Right. You've told us earlier that it was the Commissioner of Operations that called you in the morning to right. act, and he informed you that you should deploy your men at GTTI. Correct? That's right, Ma. Yeah, that's right. He's the one who informed me. In the morning mm -hmm. when you arrived at GTTI, did you see mm -hmm. the Commissioner of Operations there? No, I did not see the Commissioner of Operations. I think throughout the operations, um, at this event, I did not see him. I did not see him there. As at the time you approached the students, can you tell us mm -hmm. where your men were stationed? Um, I said it, my men were stationed on the other side of the road, the opposite side. You know, the double lane road. They were at GTTI and we were on the other side, completely the other side. 
that is the i mean the the road going to banjo that's where they were um that would be but the cemetery myself, side just opposite gtti correct exactly exactly but myself i cross over the road under i went to where they were standing to talk to them to approach them at this point did you go alone to approach them right right i went alone ma to approach them because the crowd was not uh, um uh, to my assessment you know it was not like aggressive they were not aggressive so i said oh, okay then i can i took my initiative to go under under talk to them so at this point from your own assessment the crowd was peaceful correct yeah they were they were peaceful the time i arrived if they were peaceful they were just standing you know, on the side of the road sorry what was the composition of that crowd um i may not know exactly how many of them were in that crowd but as i stated um uh, the bigger no. number was the one sorry you did not understand my questions clearly my question is what was the composition of that crowd how are you oh, are you able okay. to identify the okay. people that were in the crowd okay. okay okay the composition of the crowd yeah okay um uh, they were composed of um i can see some some children as young as uh, 15 years old to be honest to my own um, uh, to my own assessment and i can i could also see um, some of them who are adults and a part of them were in uniforms i can i could recognize the uniform as far as i know and the others are without uniform in fact the the bigger number they were without uniform the crowd that you saw were they armed they were not armed um uh, they were not having uh, to be honest with you they were not even not even having stones or stick you know with them none of them was armed to be honest with you none so when you approached this crowd of students they didn't seem to you like a threat did they no they were not a threat to me this is why i even have the guts you know to go to them and of course if they were a threat to me i would have not gone i i i assessed that you know they were not a threat to me that's why i went to them up to them you mentioned that you actually spoke to them did you speak yeah. to any mm -hmm. individuals in the crowd individually actually no no i did not speak um, in the, um, uh, to any of them individually as they were standing on the side of the road then uh, when i approach of course the bigger group that was next to the road without talking of you know the other one and the i mean the third one that was in gtti I, I spoke you know to the to the one that was next to me nearby the road but not individually i just addressed them you know uh, collectively did that crowd from the from your own uh, recollection and from what you perceived did it look as if a group of individuals were leading that crowd yes yes uh, to to my assessment i i i have uh, i could uh, i could uh, see that you know there were individuals leading you know that crowd because they could have not have that that big crowd like that without somebody you know leading them but from i could your, not know who who was the leader i could not identify the leaders from your own assessment of things the people you speak to did they appear to be the leaders of that particular crowd yes to my assessment yes ma yes ma i'm the one that i have spoken to i i consider them i consider them to be the leader of of, of the crowd and uh, even if they were not they were not also leaders and uh, the way i was talking i was talking at the top of my voice voice so basically um all those who were standing within within around there they, they could hear what what i was tell, telling them did they say anything to you while you were speaking to them 
No, I was ignored. <laughs> I was ignored, and then uh, apparently that's, uh, uh, that's when I started hearing in the crowd, in the crowd, some of them say no, we will not move. Some of us, some of them are saying no, we don't, we don't want to listen to him. And there's some murmuring, of course, that I, I can't exactly tell what, uh, what they were saying. From uh, what you've told us, you said you approached them. Did anyone actually approach you to explain to you what their purpose was for gathering there? Unfortunately, no, ma. When I approached them and I talked to them, none of them, none of them definitely um, approached me to, to tell me what, what their purpose is for, for gathering there at GTTI. None of them, I did not talk to any of them. I would like to read an extract from one of the witness statements that we have, and it's from uh, mm -hmm. Alaji S. Dabo. Mm -hmm. And I read from paragraph mm -hmm. 22 of his statement. He right. said, on Monday the 10th of April 2000, at about 7.30, remember you provided us with time, so this is exactly within yep. the time frame that you provided us with. Right. I arrived at GTTI and found the Gamsu president and some executive members by the roadside. Other students also started arriving. About two buses stopped and some students disembarked. We were waiting for the vehicle for the delegation to go to the vice president, Isatunjai Saidi. In less than 30 minutes, the PIU also arrived and, starting, and started calling on students to disperse immediately. You've told us exactly that you told the students to disperse, not so. Um, um, can, can, I, can I come in on that, on that portion? You may. OK. <clears throat> Um, we did not, I did not uh, come with my men and I told them immediately to disperse. Uh, we don't do that because when you come, you have to assess, you know, I mean, the situation and that's exactly what I did to, through my explanation. When we came, they disembarked and they, they assembled the opposite side of the road, the other side, and then I approached them. I did not tell them to disperse at that point in time. I approached them to plea to them to disperse. Yes, I told them. Please, can you dispass and you leave this area and then you go home. That's yes. So you agree with me that you did tell them to dispass, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I told them that. I went to the first time, my first point of contact with them. I told them. So we that. move on with the statement. Still reading from the same right, paragraph. Right now. I tried right to now. approach him to tell him the development, that there was no demonstration. Mm -hmm. But before I could reach them, the officers started advancing. This is one of the students speaking, student leaders, Alaji S. Dabo. Mm -hmm. And he mm -hmm. was the deputy vice president of Gamsu, as it then was. Right. Sorry, vice president. He said he tried to approach you, but then again, your men started advancing towards them. Let me finish up with the statement. I raised my hands up, but they kept advancing until they passed me and started beating and arresting the students, including Omar Juf. The rest of the students ran in different directions through the cemetery, inside GTTI, and towards Westfield End, chased by the <coughs> PIU officers. I was hit on the head once with a truncheon and about to fall down. I managed to get to a tree by the roadside and I leaned on it for a while until I gained consciousness. Is he lying about the scene? Um, I'm not going to say that you know he is lying because that uh, that up to the commission. But then what I can say there is uh, there is no no officer commanding or unit commander who will just come on the ground and then start 
dispersing or, or having encounter, you know, with the, with the crowd. No, definitely no. no. I did not see him. He has never come to me to talk to me. If that was the case, it was peaceful, as I said in my, in my earlier statement. They were very peaceful, honestly speaking. I have to be frank with you. They are very peaceful. So that was, I have the guts that there was no threats, you know, directed to me. And then I went and I talked to them. I was the one who went and I talked to them. No, he Not, he, none, he, none of them have come to me. Mr. Njai, he didn't say he approached you. He said he tried to approach you. And oh, okay. also, I'll just read an extract from your statement as well. Mm -hmm. If I may. I'm mm -hmm, reading from yeah. paragraph five, just towards All the right. end. Mm -hmm. After several failed attempts to convince them to disperse, and while I was going back to where the PIU personnel stationed, the crowd became mm -hmm. more agitated and prevented mm -hmm. the flow of traffic. I then mm -hmm. made the use of the PAS, asking them mm -hmm. to peacefully disperse mm -hmm. and leave. Otherwise, the PIU personnel will disperse them. Right. These warnings were repeated four times with the interval of five minutes, but I right. still I was facing resistance. At that mm -hmm. spot, I deemed it necessary to let the PIU to disperse the crowd bef before engaging the PIU personnel. Mm -hmm. right. I had a short briefing in reminding them mm -hmm. of our objective which was to maintain public order. Right, ma. Right, ma. That's exactly what I did. Okay. Now you've told mm -hmm. us that at mm -hmm. the point where you when you approached the students, they were all very mm -hmm. peaceful. None of them carried right. a weapon. But they were agitated right. about something. Right? Mm -hmm. And it was mm -hmm. not actually towards you. Mm -hmm. Correct? No, I, I could not determine what they were agitated, you know, what the agitation was I mean, it's from. The, the source of the agitation, I could not know. But I know that they were agitated. But from your own... But I could not know this. From your own perception mm -hmm. on that particular day, you've told us that you perceived that they were peaceful. Yeah, yeah, they were peaceful. Honestly, they were peaceful, right? And yet, your men did attack mm -hmm. them. Correct. Yeah, can can I put a can I bring a point of correction there, or to enlighten you know, that area? Uh, Mr. Njai, your men did attack them. Is either a true or false? And after you can bring your point of clarification. Yes, yes, yes. They, they yeah, they dispersed them. They dispersed them. Yes, ma. I mentioned attack and not disperse. They attacked no. the students. No. Okay. No. Let's go through how they actually disperse the students. Okay. I'll give you a certain I'll give you certain points from the statements of the mm -hmm. students that I had read. Right. One mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. your men started shooting tear gas into the crowd, correct? Without any provocation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Correct? Well, I'm listening. No, I'm listening to you. Do you, I am you know what you are telling actually me? Ask, asking a question. It's for you to affirm. Your men mm -hmm. shot tear gas into the crowd of students without provocation. Correct? Yeah, they shot. Yeah, we we discharged from gases. Yeah, from tear gases. Yeah. The students were then beaten with buttons and shields. Um, correct. I. I I could witness one under uh, yeah. I could witness one. I saw I saw one of them beating a student with button. Yes. But it actually happened during this process, correct? Yeah, during when they when they were dispersed. Yeah, when they were dispersing them, right? The students ran away because right. of the tear gas and the aggression of your men, correct? Right. And. Your men chased them and beat some of them, correct? And arrested some of them as well, correct? Um, 
I'll come to that that point. But but they they were beaten. They were chased uh, and beaten. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Njai, yes. Is, yes, it yes, yes, yes. Happened or it did not happen. So please tell us if it that happened. happened. It happened. It happened. It happened. So in fact, from all of these things, your men actually caused the aggression. They attacked the students without any form of provocation. Correct. Ma. Um, uh, can you give me to uh, let me explain myself because you are just giving me a list of one, two, three, and then you want to want me to say yes or no, yes or no. So at least give me give me the chance, you know. I mean to, to you, tell you. You can answer the, the question. Man, you can choose. You can choose to say it didn't happen and then clarify, and you can choose to say it happened. It is already oh, truth that okay, I'm yeah, looking for. It happened. It happened. Okay, correct? it happened. We, we chose them, and the, and the, some of them were beaten. Yes. Okay, I'll give you time to actually clarify some of these things. Based on your own okay, recollection, okay. I am just right. concerned about the truth of what happened that day. Right, now, right, ma. Now you will agree that all of these things that happen—the mm -hmm. attacking of students without any form of provocation, the beating and mm -hmm. arresting of students—was all mm -hmm. contrary to the order that was given. Correct. No, it was not contrary. They we are they they disperse them. I don't want. I don't like the word attack. You know, <laughs> me too. I mean, they disperse them because the word attack is is really um I'm not comfortable with that word. Word definitely. Um, if you pass, I will I will agree with you. But attack them, I I'm not very much comfortable. My apologies for not using the word that you want me to use, but. It's either blue or no, black. Not, not, it cannot be both. Not, not I want you to use. Not I want you to use. You can use whatever words you know you want. But then I say that I'm not comfortable, you know, with that word. But you can use it. I'm, I, I, not that I want to tell um, you what you are supposed to use. Mr. Mr. Njai, mm -hmm. uh, let's just mm -hmm. go back to the point here. It's not about the right, use ma. of words. Words, okay, can, words can mean different things. But the point right. is, the students were attacked. Correct. Right. right. Okay, now let's go back to the operational order. And whatever mm -hmm. happened during that time is actually mm -hmm. contrary to the operational order we mm -hmm. have here. I'll read from there. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. It states, we should avoid provoking disturbance and bear the required level of tolerance to avert any situation. Mm -hmm. Clearly, that did not happen from your own end. You didn't do that. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. I'm listening. Yes, I'm listening. Yes, ma. Yes. Do you, do you agree with what I've said so far? Yes. Yes, ma. Okay. So we'll move on from that. You agreed that you provoked the attack? and then you arrested some of the students who we have identified as the leaders of the demonstration. What happened after you, you've arrested them? Um, uh, Ma, I don't agree that, you know, we provoke, you know, I mean, the attack. What, what happened? Of course, I agree that I, I, I witnessed some of them were, were, were beaten. And that is up to the commission, you know, the, to, to, I mean, to determine that. But... What, why, why we dispersed them was that they were blocking, you know, the traffic. Um, they were I'm completely not, blocking the traffic. I'm not asking. Um, I'm not asking the reason why. I'm just mm -hmm. concerned as to how it was done. And in yeah, that's, case, that's where I'm coming because yes. I have to give a reason and say why. So this is where I was coming to. Yes. And in this case, uh, you will agree with me that mm -hmm. uh, a bunch of students just gathered at a particular place mm -hmm. without causing mm -hmm. any form of disturbance. Was there no was a disturbance, ma. I don't, agree. I, don't, I don't agree with that, ma. They, there was a disturbance. Because they, the moment, the moment you know, they, they, they came, they come up the you know, highway and they block the traffic, there's a disturbance. There is public disorder. So there is, and that was the reason why my unit was trying to disperse them. 
we cannot we cannot we cannot disperse students who have not you know i mean uh, created any 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 public disturbance so that's why i said i don't agree with that we do not attack them just we want to attack them okay i did read out the statement of a particular student and you agreed with right. me that that student was right now i'll read out the statement of another student that was on that particular present on that particular scene and you will tell me whether this statement is actually true as to what happened or not yeah. at 6 30 so, a.m so ma, can you can you hear me yes sorry yeah because um uh, when you when you read when you read all those i mean um, statements those points i wanted to intervene and actually you told me no say yes or no and then later you know you'll have the chance you know to come in so so this is why i was saying yes if it happened if beating was happened i would say yes if they were chased i would say yes if tear gases were thrown, I would say yes. But then give me the chance now to come and say why this thing was happened. Okay, then uh, you want to provide yeah. a justification for it, correct? Exactly, exactly, ma. Okay, exactly. Let's hear that's your what I want. Justification then. Okay, thank you so much, ma. Um, um, I will not, I will not deny, I will not deny at all that there were no chase. They were not dispersed, they were not beaten because I have seen okay. once now, or twice. Based on where you have started so far, you have told me already that you do not deny all those points that I've mentioned, right? Yeah. Then you, you told you, me that you know they you were not, they were not yes. disturbing. You, you were do telling not deny me that the they fact were... that sorry, let me repeat it again. You do not deny the fact that the students were peaceful at that point, correct? Mm -hmm. You do not deny mm -hmm. the yeah, fact right. that they right. were not acting provocatively towards your men. Correct? Right. You do not right. deny the fact that it was your men that shot at them with mm -hmm. tear gas right. and right. chased them, beating them with buttons. Right, ma. And right, later ma. arrested some of them. Correct? That, that's very correct. And that's that very is correct. clearly I agree. the fact of whatever happened that day, isn't it? Yeah, that is correct. Yeah, that is it's so, a real fact. And let me just read out this portion to you again, because we've already established all the facts that happened that day. Yeah. So we will not want to dwell in justifications. It was your oh, failure. Okay. It was a failure on your part when it came to that issue. Correct. Oh, okay. Okay, um, uh, you as the commander, you've told us that mm -hmm. a commander always has control over his men. You as the commander right. had control over your right. men. You were the one that was ordering right. your men. Right. And you were the one that gave the order for them right. to shoot into the crowd of students. And you were the one that also gave the order for the arrest mm -hmm. of students, correct? Right, right, ma. So you will agree with me at this point, after all these points that we've established so far, you will agree with me that you provoked the situation. It's either yeah, a yes, yes or no, Mr. Cissé. Yes, 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 yes ma'am. So you accept yes, responsibility I, for whatever happened on the 10th of April 2000. I, I took the responsibility. I take I, I take the responsibility that whatever happened, you know, at that point in time, GTTI, the beating and uh, the chasing, the throwing, you know, of uh, of tear gases. Yes, that's very true, because I was the officer commanding. And just to stress on this point, and just to establish that um, this is actually what transpired at GTTI, um, I would like to mm -hmm. read another statement to you. The statement right, of a student right. witness. Mm -hmm. By 7.30, before we could start to move over into GTTI, officers of the PI, pub, 
po police intervention unit, sorry, had arrived on the scene. They immediately started mm -hmm. asking, they immediately started to ask to speak with me. But I directed them to the vice president, Alaji Dabo, mm -hmm. whose statement I had read earlier. Who was the no. one assigned to speak with them? Mm -hmm. They were not willing to do that mm -hmm. and soon ordered that we disperse. There were about 25 officers and about 1,000 students at that time. After, repeated, after repeated orders for us to disperse, which you had clearly told us, Right. We were attacked. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, you and your men were in a situation where you had more students than the police officers you actually came with. Correct? No, we didn't have more. I mean, more police officers than this. No. So no, I don't agree that. The officers you you had were proportionate mm -hmm. to the students that were there at that time? There were about uh, not more than 50 officers. And the students, you know, they were more than 1,000. So, I mean, the, the number is, is far more than what the number of people I came under, what, what we found on the ground. So what I read out right now mm -hmm. as to the situation that happened at GTTI mm -hmm. is actually true because this is also corroborated by the statement of Alaji S. Dabo that I had read out earlier. Mm -hmm. We did confirm that statement as well. No, uh, Ma, uh, my issue here, my problem here is for them, or they have their opinion, but for them saying that they try to come and uh, talk, you know, I mean, to PIU personnel to stop, that has not happened. That has not happened. I mean, I want you to take it into consideration. I was the one who went on the ground <clears throat> and approached them, you know, I mean, to talk to them. Not them coming talking to me. I was I was going to be very pleased if I see anybody coming and talking to me. Um, this is because this is what I was looking for. Yes, this is what the statement uh, provided. But then again, the issue of who mm -hmm. approached who is actually irrelevant mm -hmm. because you've already told us that the crowd mm -hmm. was peaceful mm -hmm. and yet you yes, attacked them. Yeah, the crowd was peaceful. I totally agree. But why, why we attacked them? Because they were disturbing the, the, the public order. And this was the reason why we dispersed them. Nothing else. Because they were disturbing the public order under the instruction, instructions, you know, we see way that go and maintain, you know, I mean, order. So I think I'm also in order when I see that, you know, a crowd that is even peaceful and that moreover again, moreover again, they were not even armed, even stones or stick, you know, with them to, to add it to my, um, to my verbal statement. But then the, the, the fact that, you know, they were disturbing the public order, the traffic at that particular, you know, at the time and the vehicles could that was the reason why I give, you know, I mean, uh, my, my, I told my unit to disperse them. And the, during that dispersing, I agree, I totally agree that um, I have seen, because I was behind and running here and there, I could see some of the uh, one or two officers, you know, beating them. I could see one or two officers chasing them. You know, I could see one or two officers, you know, arrested, you know, and apprehend, you know, I mean, some of them. All these things I'm not denying. I'm not denying. Honestly, I'm not denying. It happened. Um, Mr. Cisse, you did t tell us earlier that um, you told us earlier that you had 50 men. 50 men. About 50 men, yes, ma. yes. On that day. Right. So it was not only right, one or two officers. It was, in fact, mm -hmm. all of the officers against the students that were guarded there. And you repeatedly told us that they were not armed, they were not yep. armed. That means yep. you provoked the situation. Mm -hmm. You started Ma. the whole thing. 
Ma. And given the fact uh, that you had agreed um, on that point, mm -hmm. do you want us to go back to it again? Because we've already established that no. you were no. the one that provoked the let's situation. Go. Yeah, let's continue. Let's continue. But then I respect, you know, I mean, their statement. And uh, my statement should be respected. Because my role, my duty, you know, to go there is to maintain, you know, public order. Even though the person is peaceful and uh, you are disturbing, you know, the order, I think my role as a police officer is to make sure that, you know, that public, that, that disturbance, you know, is disrupt. And uh, this is what I have done. Of course, as a result, as a result of me dispersing them, brought the provocation, which I will agree. I totally agree, but then I was doing my role as a police officer to stop, you know, discontinue you know, the disturbance. So, so we can continue. I agree. So you will agree with me on this point that the manner in which you dispersed the students mm -hmm. provoked the situation mm -hmm. and the chaos that happened. Yeah, ob obvious. in ob ob obvious. Obviously, yes. Obviously, yes, because I disperse them and then they start running and, uh, you know, it, it has it has brought us to another level. I that's, 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 that's true. That's something that, you know, we are seeing now. That's and, something uh, that, you know, that has happened. And you will agree with me that the manner in which it was done was unlawful and illegal. Um, you have okay, Ma, I mean, uh, the commission... Um, Mm -hmm. Just go on, please. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, ma. I agree. Hello. Can okay, you hear so me? So we'll move on from this point since we have all agreed on this particular issue. Let's okay. go back to the students okay. that were arrested. Where were mm -hmm. they taken? Um, they were taken to Kanifin, to the office. Sorry, I didn't get your answer. My apologies. Hello, Mr. Cisse, can you hear me? Uh, Mr. Chair, I take over from Mariama. She's gone out to confer with the technicians in the OV van. Uh, but uh, in view of the current situation and in, the, in view of the fact that it's now 2 p.m., um, uh, I propose that we adjourn uh, our hearing of this witness until another date when uh, we would identify all the technical problems and would be able to address yeah. them. Yeah, it is there back now. on the screen. It looks like we can yeah. proceed. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he's yeah. back on the screen. Uh, Mr. Cisse, can you confirm yes, how much mm -hmm. time we can have with you for, the, for today? How much more time do we have with you? Um, as much as you can, because I am I'm, I'm free from now on. I'm, I'm free. We can continue. With you I, I have today. Okay. So, Mr. Chair, yes, 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 sir. That would be um, great. We can continue and uh, see how how far we can go. Except if it is desirable that we adjourn with him and give him a rendezvous to continue another date. And in the meantime, we interpose uh, the other witness who's been waiting. Uh, we stand guided by your decision. He is here, he is able to proceed. We are also able to take another witness. Um, so I leave it to your discretion, whether we continue with him or we adjourn with him, give him another date to come and continue. We take a short break, and after the break, we bring on another witness. We stand guided by you, Mr. Chair. We are indifferent. Any which way you decide, we will proceed. 
uh, one component, if you can make that um, point clear, how much time do you need with him to finish? Uh, one hour, Mr. Chair? No, one okay. more hour? If you need an, an hour, then uh, I think we should um, take your suggestion end with him today and then uh, uh, arrange him to have him another day to complete his uh, reaction. And then we will take a break now, come back at uh, 2.45 um, and with the next witness. If that is okay with you on your logistics and other things, we that should is, um, uh, proceed accordingly. That is fine by us, Mr. Chair. And uh, for Mr. Cisse, we are sorry, you would have to come another time so yeah. we would give you a rendezvous okay so no. we would make arrangements okay uh, so so okay. Uh, we would inform the commission when next you are coming and we hope that by then okay. the the technical problems would have all been identified and sorted out thank you very i much hope so sir. Sir. Sir, let me hand over to to the chair so that you could be discharged for Thank you very much, Emma, Mr. Cisse, for your testimony. We will come back to you uh, when we work out uh, the logistics. We will take um, uh, a break now and uh, come back at uh, 2.45. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>